Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Marcus Rosa, a.k.a. Mazuma TV, back at y'all with some more boxing talk, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. I'm just chilling at the crib right now, man, just enjoying my time off. Back at y'all with some more boxing talk. On the road to 3K, we well into the 2100 mark. Shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. All right, y'all, let's talk about the news that had just came in recently, man. And it's pretty disappointing news in all honesty, but it is what it is, man. This ain't going to be the first time we get disappointing news. This ain't going to be the last time that we get disappointing news. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, Igis Clemens, uh, Vasil Lomachenko's manager, uh, had put out the indication out there. Well, he was pretty much indicating to the fact that Vasil Lomachenko isn't, you know, particularly interested in the fight anytime soon. Said that he wants to take the rest of the year off. And most likely, he won't be back in training until the end of the year. So, you know, based off of that logic, most likely, Vasil Lomachenko won't be ready for a fight until 2025. Now, this wasn't something that was necessarily surprising to me, in all honesty, because I had seen previous interviews where Vasil Lomachenko pretty much made it seem like his heart wasn't in boxing anymore. You see what I'm saying? I think after the Devin Haney fight, you know, Vasil Lomachenko had lost a lot of motivation. You know what I mean? Pretty much uh, wasn't optimistic about, you know, accomplishing his goals anymore. But somehow, some way, his father was able to, you know, motivate him to fight, you know, George Cambosis. And he put on a spectacular performance. So, in all honesty, just assessing Lomachenko, I don't think it's really like a physical thing with him that he feels like he doesn't want to no longer compete. But I think it's a mental thing in all honesty. And it seems like that is very much true because there's been, you know, talks for a little while now that, you know, Javante Davis was, you know, in talks with facing Vasil Lomachenko. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like everything was going well. Bob Aaron was making it seem like everything was... Uh, on the, you know, on the up and that this was actually official. But, you know, according to Igis Clemens, man, it just seems like Vasil Lomachenko, he, he wants more time off. You know what I'm saying? He wants to spend more time with his family and he's not necessarily worried about boxing at this point in time. So uh, I'm disappointed by it, but not necessarily surprised. So, you know, can you call this a duck? You know what I mean? That's a particularly, I mean, that's an entirely different conversation. But regardless, Vasil Lomachenko, you know what I mean? He bailing out on the Javante Davis fight. So, you know, Javante Davis isn't going to start his career for nobody. You know what I mean? He's going to keep the, you know, the wheels turning. And he just has to find a possible, you know, opponent that's willing to step up and take the challenge. You know what I'm saying? So who does that leave him with? According to Michael Benson, that leaves him with a possible Shakur Stevenson fight, William Cepeda, or an Isaac Cruz rematch. Now, you know, I'm not a, you know... They're all good fights, honestly. You know, the Isaac Cruz fight with Javante Davis was entertaining. You know, Isaac Cruz was game the entire time. He was the aggressor. You know what I mean? We seen something that we didn't usually see in Javante Davis, which is him being on the back foot and stuff like that. But is that a fight that we we really care to see next as boxing fans? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, the reality of the situation is Javante Davis beat that man with one hand. You know what I mean? He had a hand injury. And, um, you know, he still was able to outbox him and outpoint him clearly. So, you know, Isaac Cruz, you know, he's bounced back since then, became champion in the 140-pound division, defeated a common opponent with Javante Davis and Roley Romero. But regardless, you know, in terms of style and improvement as a fighter, I don't really see too much different with Isaac Cruz. So why am I going to be sure that it's going to be a different performance or a different outcome? You see what I mean? So I don't really care for that fight in all honesty. I don't know how you guys feel. But, you know, at this particular time, Isaac Cruz rematch is something I really care about. Moving on, you know, Michael Benson also mentioned, you know, the William Cepeda fight. Now, Oscar De La Hoya has came out multiple times to let it be known that he wants zero smoke with Shakur Stevenson. But he's also let it be known that uh, William Cepeda is ranked in every other sanction and body in the lightweight division. So they're making it seem like they have options at this particular point. And, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, he all about the money. You know what I mean? Just like any other promoter is and... You know, once they build up, they fight it to a certain extent. You know, obviously, they want to cash out on them and get them involved with a big fight. And it gets no bigger than Javante Davis in the lightweight division. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Oscar De La Hoya is heavily exploring that fight. If I was Oscar De La Hoya, that's something that I'd be looking to pull the trigger on as well. So that might be a possibility. And, you know, uh, Javante Davis is accustomed to fighting these type of fighters, these come forward aggressive fighters. Uh, but what is Cepeda is a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the guys that he's facing in the past, I look at him as more of a dangerous fighter than Roley Romero and Hector Luis Garcia. You know what I'm saying? Guys like that. Um, in all honesty, he might be more of a threat than Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia has that one hitter quitter with the left hook. But, you know, um, I think William Cepeda provides a lot more pressure, a lot more volume. And when you have the gas tank that William Cepeda has, you know, it leaves and you're constantly letting your hands go. 
You know what I mean? The more chances you take, the more successful you might be against somebody like Javante Davis or anybody in particular. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that is a similar style. That is a style that Javante Davis has seen in the past, but I don't think he's seen it to like that, that intensity. You know what I mean? It just seems like Williams Cepeda is just a little bit more of a tough fight than the guys that he's fought in the past. So stylistically, I think that'll be a very intriguing fight. I would like to see how Javante Davis approaches that fight. And Williams Cepeda is a hungry, undefeated, you know, high knockout ratio having contender. You see what I mean? So if that's a fight that was to be made, you know, that's not the ultimate fight that I want to see, but I really wouldn't be mad at seeing that fight at all. Moving on, obviously, the number one fight to be made in the division Michael Benson puts out there is the Shakur Stevenson fight. Shakur Stevenson is one of the most skilled fighters in the world, in my opinion. I know he gets a lot of slack. I know he gets a lot of negative criticism, but regardless, um, Shakur Stevenson is extremely skilled, one of the most elusive fighters, and um, he, I, he hasn't had a close fight to date. You see what I mean? So obviously he's doing something right. And um, as long as Shakur Stevenson is winning, that fight with Javante Davis will always be big. And you know, the more that these guys continue to win, you know, the bigger the fight will be. You see what I mean? I'm not a fan of marinating fights, obviously. I'm a boxing fan. You know what I mean? That's more of the things that promoters do in order to, you know, try to uh, maximize their profit. But, you know, uh, you know, the Shakur Stevenson fight and the Javante... Shakur Stevenson versus Javante Davis is the fight that we ultimately want to see. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if I was to rank these fights in order, since Vasil Lomachenko, you know what I'm saying, don't really want to step up to the plate right now, obviously Shakur Stevenson is number one. William Cepeda is number two. And you know Isaac Cruz, the rematch will be number three. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that last because we already seen what happened. And like I said, I don't really see too much changes with Isaac Cruz that will give me the idea that the fight will play out any different. If anything, Javante Davis has gotten more experience since then. He's gotten sharper since then, and he's been extremely active and just living the fighter lifestyle. So you know what I mean. If anything, Javante Davis may pull the trigger and might actually get Isaac Cruz up out of there. You see what I mean? Especially with you know. I mean, I'm not gonna. I, I can't like look into the future, but. You know, looking at the fight in the rematch, there's a strong possibility that, you know, Javante Davis' left hand might not be injured. So, you know, he might be able to pull the trigger and actually hurt Isaac Cruz. You feel what I mean? But Isaac Cruz, defensively responsible, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Most likely. And he's a tough dude overall. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, regardless, he just don't got the skill set to beat Javante Davis. So, you know what I mean? That's my particular thoughts on the situation, man. Like I said, it's disappointing that uh, Lomachenko isn't really willing to step up to the plate at this point. And I just feel like if this would have been any other fighter, this would have been a black athlete or any of the top boxers right now, you know, they would call him a duck. But you see what I'm saying? It just seems like, you know, Vasil Lomachenko got the, the complexion for the protection and he's getting a pass. It seems like people are being more understanding than anything. Like if this would have been a situation where Javante Davis was setting up a fight with Devin Haney or Shakur Stevenson or any of these top black athletes and they said the same thing, they would get caught all types of ducks, pussies, cowards, everything under the sun. But, you know, it is what it is, man. We're going to talk about this more on live later tonight. I appreciate everybody that's if you still watching right now, man, I deeply appreciate you. You know what I mean? Listening to the boxing talk, listening to my opinions and all that type of stuff, man. Y'all share, like subscribe to the channel you said like i said we on the road to 3k and we well into the 2100 mark and i appreciate everybody that's been joining me on this journey so shout out to the nation and the mob man y'all let me know what y'all think about this i'm out of here man peace